Today is Monday, May 27th, and this is a trade review on a position I just took a little while ago involving the micro e-mini S&P 500 futures. The ticker symbol is forward slash MES, and as of the time of this recording, the S&P 500 futures is quoted at 53.29 and a half. And since the futures market started trading uh, four hours ago, um, it's currently up eight handles. So with the calendar turning to May uh, 28th in about nine minutes, I thought I'd do a quick uh, recap on this trade. So um, from this uh, look back, this is the chart layout at the seven-day 10,000 tick level. And uh, from this review, I've marked up two reasonable support and resistance levels via the blue horizontal lines. And we can see here that the seven-day high was back on May 23rd when it hit 53.68 and within the same trading session uh, reached a seven-day low of 52.73. And subsequent to hitting this low, price has been working its way back to the upside uh, that it broke above this local resistance level and is what appears to now be on its way to retesting this upper resistance level of 53.41. If price does manage to break this, then there is that room for price to retest the seven-day high of 53.68. Um, so from this bounce from May 23rd, uh, it appears the current market structure is inside this ascending channel. So price is just ranging in between these purple trend lines. The uh, dotted line <coughs> is considered, from my perspective, to be another layer of support and resistance. And right now, price is literally at the bottom half of this range. Now, from <clears throat> the micro point of view, the uh, trend appears to be to the upside. From the macro point of view, looking at it holistically, um, it appears from my perspective that the general trend is to the downside. So price has been trending uh, inside between these two yellow trend lines with a slight edge to the downside. So I'm speculating that if price continues respecting this purple support level, it has to then contend with the strong yellow resistance level. And we have this crossover occurring in a few hours. So this may be sometime around into tomorrow's trading session that I think that's when the market's going to decide whether price wants to continue trending higher, possibly breaking above this resistance level and an ultimate retest of its seven-day high of 53.68, or price is going to respect this resistance level and push price lower back to retest this uh, support level of 52.88. And again, uh, I'm uh, this is all speculation, all the th theory. There's no guarantees that anything will or could happen at this crossover, but based on this... <clears throat> theory, I did participate on a potential move to the downside. I am more bearish, uh, speculating again that there will be a rejection uh, during the overnight session, possibly heading into the pre-market hours later today or tomorrow morning. So a little while ago, uh, I took a short position. Uh, I didn't short the actual futures. I shorted via option contracts. Uh, again, speculating that heading into this crossover, I don't think price is going to reach the this apex of the crossover, I think price is going to start showing signs of either strength or weakness, uh, possibly somewhere around this area uh, or this range right here. And um, uh, specific to my trade, I selected the option contracts that will be expiring May 31st, this Friday. And relative to the spot price of 5330 I selected the 5315 strike price, and as a buyer of option contracts and bearish, I'm on the put side. So, this is essentially what the contract is saying: is that on or before the close of this Friday's trading session, I'm anticipating the S&P 500 will be at or below 5315, and uh, <clears throat> that's the current uh, status. Uh, so it's just a matter of hours now before. We'll see something more significant occurring. So what I'll do is just to put things into perspective. What I'll do is I'll switch over to the option chart specific to my trade. 
Okay, so unlike the prior chart, this chart is specific to my option contract. So right by the ticker, it's involving the MES, uh, the 5315 strike price. It's on the put side, and the option premium is quoted at $14.75 per option contract. And right over here on the chart layout, uh, there's a confirmation bubble showing I did pick up three of these contracts at the current spot price of $14.75. And if I click on this, uh, I picked these contracts up about 30 minutes ago. So um, with that set aside, opening up Active Trader, my entry price is marked up by these two yellow arrowheads on either side of price, which is effectively the zero line on the profit and loss side of this ledger. Now, the doomsday scenario is that price, the S&P 500 continues ripping higher, but I do not close this position out. The option premium goes from 1475 to zero. So if that was the doomsday scenario, the option premium goes to zero. My max loss is $221.25. So that's what I've committed to uh, this trade. So each option contract is valued to be around $74 per option contract. Now, if I'm risking $221, uh, initially I'm looking for a one to three risk to reward. So that would equate to a, a $664 target. Uh, so if I scroll up to $664, that would equate to option premium reaching $59 per option contract. So this is my official, my initial target. Now, if there is a complete sell-off, let's say during the rest of the week, I will let the trade run. Uh, my next target would then be a one to a four risk to reward, and that would be around $885, and that would equate to uh, 885 that would be right here with the option premium of $73.75 for a profit potential of $885. So those are my targets right now. Um, what I'll do is I'll just remove the uh, confirmation bubble. So the bubble's gone. So that's the current status and my overall thesis for a bearish uh, week for the S&P 500. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll pause it here. I'll pick it up in a few hours, heading into the stock market open. Maybe at that point, we'll see something more significant happen. So until that update, more to follow. So a quick update. Uh, it's a few minutes after midnight. So this is officially the trading session for Thursday, May 30th. Um, and as of the time of this recording, the S&P 500 futures is quoted at 5,257 and three quarters. And since the futures market started trading six hours ago, uh, the S&P 500 is already down 26 handles. So this red candlestick right here was leading into the stock market close. And then during the overnight, well, afternoon, late afternoon session, end of day, whatever you want to call it, uh, S&P 500 just sold off. And it appears that the trend to the downside is still in progress. So... As I was speculating, this descending channel is uh, working out as, uh, as I had mapped out. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to delete this ascending channel because it's no longer relevant. Uh, so again, this white line is just a visual markup as to where I took the short position via those option contracts. Uh, and uh, speaking of those contracts, opening up the trade tab, the position is now down up $920. Uh, the option premium is quoted at $60.25 per contract. However, the most important thing is that right here, these option contracts are now designated ITM or in the money. So there's only two days remaining before these contracts go worthless. Uh, that would be all of Thursday and all day tomorrow. So that's those two days left. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, my initial target of one to three risk to reward has been shattered. Uh, so that was around $665 or something. And then my one to four risk to reward, that was a profit potential of $885. Uh, 
So clearly the trade is going greater than I had expected. So I'm going to let the trade continue running through. Um, I'm very tempted to closing it out right now. Uh, this is a, a, a significant uh, uh, move to the downside. So I just want to protect the capital gain or the gains to this position. Uh, the, what I'm dreading is that price may come back up to retest this resistance level. And with only two days remaining, that is a major detriment to the life of those contracts. So, um, you know, that $900 could quickly go to $200 uh, if price does decide to run up tomorrow to retest this uh, uh, resistance level of 52.88. But anyway, I'm going to keep the trade running. I'm going to hold on to it uh, possibly all through Friday, maybe. Um, so that's the status. I'll pause it again and I'll pick it up maybe when the stock market opens at 930. So another update, the futures market has been trading for almost a little over five hours now. So this uh, calendar will be turning into Friday, May 31st in about 27 minutes. So uh, we can see that here that price was rejected by this uh, gray dotted line and f is finding support at the next support resistance level sitting at 5,239. Uh, considering there's not that much time remaining, uh, I don't want to press my luck heading into tomorrow because there could be this potential bounce and that would be a, det a detriment to the option contract. So uh, right now, if I switch over to the trade tab, the trade is right here. It's up $1,100. Uh, the option premium is quoted $69.25 and the contracts are designated ITM or in the money. So I'm going to go ahead and place an order, close it out at the current spot price of, well, at 69.50. I'm going to place an order here. So uh, what I'll do is I'll start prepping the uh, limit order. So I'll go ahead and place that limit order right here. So um, spot price is $69. I'm going to see if I can close this out at 69 69 and a quarter, and I'm fine with that. So the max profit is $1,385, and here's with the fees and all that. And I'll provide a breakdown after this, but uh, I want to be able to protect the, the gains as most uh, efficient as possible and not run the risk of uh, losing the value. So the order should be sitting there. It should get filled at 69.50. So the trade's up uh, 1100. So there's my limit order right there. Now, even if uh, price drops another uh, leg lower, I'm fine with that. So uh, as long as I was able to capitalize on this move to the downside, and I entered that trade right here where this white line is uh, pointed at. So okay, I'm going to pause it here and possibly wait for that order to get filled. There, the order was just filled. I'm out of the trade. So right here under quantity, position is zero. Um, so I was able to get that order filled. And what I'll do is I will provide a breakdown on the trade details. Uh, and what I'll do is switch over to the option chart. So this is the option chart uh, to my trade. So right here by the ticker, this is involving the MES, the 5315 strike price. It's on the put side. And right here are the uh, confirmation bubbles. So I picked up those three contracts at 1475. Then I added this one last contract at 1275, accounting for the four contracts. And right here, I was able to sell it at 6925. 
And I saw that uh, right here at 11.36, so about three minutes ago. And uh, the first three I picked up was back on uh, May 27th. So that is, so if I open up Active Trader, again, under net position, it's zero. So what I'll do is I'll provide, again, a breakdown of the option trade, and I'll switch over to the uh, futures chart again. So right here, uh, back to the chart. This uh, move right here, heading into the close, again, price was rejected by the dotted line and is finding support at 52.39. Um, and what I'll do is right here, I will be tracking this for a potential bounce. And if there is a bounce, I'm going to see how price reacts when it retests this dotted line for a potential rejection. And then I may or may not consider adding into another trade, depending on when this happens. So if it's later today when the uh, regular stock market opens, uh, I might just sit back and look at other trade setups. But for the time being, I am pleased that I was able to capture this trade. And uh, until the next setup, I will, uh, I'll see you.